It's Thursday in the 17th week of Ordinary Time. Again, I am uh, away this week, uh, and so I'm not able to celebrate Mass with you, but I decided to pre-record some re reflect daily reflections. And so today on this Thursday, uh, we celebrate uh, the memorial of St. Peter Chrysogonus, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. And so as we gather together, let us, of course, begin uh, with prayer. O oh God, who made Bishop St. Peter Christod Christodologus an outstanding preacher of your incarnate word, grant through his intercession that we may constantly ponder in our hearts the mysteries of your salvation and faithfully express them in all that we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Beloved sisters and brothers, to me, the very least of all the holy ones, the grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the, the inscrutable riches of Christ and to bring to light for all what is the plan of, that, of the mystery, hidden from ages past in God who created all things so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the principalities and authorities in the heavens. This was according to the eternal promise that he accomplished in Christ, Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness of speech and confidence of access through faith in him. The word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm, Lord, Teach me your statutes. Lord, teach me your statutes. How shall a young man be faultless in his way? By keeping to your words. Lord, teach me your statutes. With all my heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commands. Lord, teach me your statutes. Within my heart I treasure your promise that I may not sin against you. Lord, teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Lord, teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the ordinances of your mouth. Lord, teach me your statutes. In the way of your decrees I rejoice, as much as in all riches. Lord, teach me your statutes. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, a good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person, out of the store of goodness in his heart, produces good, produces good. But an evil person, out of a store of evil produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. The scriptures today remind us uh, of a, a very central theme in Christianity, uh, and that is that the Word of God that was known even centuries before Jesus, you know, God spoke uh, to Moses, God spoke to the prophets. What was unique and powerful about Christianity with the coming of Christ, we read, you know, John's Gospel says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. You see, the Word didn't just stay as a Word, it actually became a person. And similarly, the Word we read, the Word we preach, the Scriptures we read, aren't just meant to be words that float around in our heads, but words that would eventually become action acted out, carried out in our lives. So that today, sure enough, people would say the word becomes flesh in you and in me. Remember, what's one of the titles that we give to the church itself? Besides church, scripture calls it the body of Christ. Think about it. The church is a body and Jesus is the head. You can't separate head from body. We're called the body of Christ. If you separate head from body, you, all you have now is a corpse. We're not the corpse of Christ. Jesus Christ is alive. He is risen. He is among us. But we must be his witnesses because it's an incredible claim. People would not, would not naturally believe that somebody that we admit died 
is now back. Why would they believe such a thing? But here's the compelling reason. And it's not because of not arguments we make. The most compelling reason that we can make, that we will move people to actually consider an extraordinary claim that Jesus is alive and in our midst, the compelling reason is us, meaning the lives that we live. That's why they believed in the beginning. When the apostles preached that Jesus was, had died and risen, he was crucified, but he's alive. Why do people believe such an extraordinary claim? Because while what they claimed was extraordinary, the impact of Jesus on their lives was undeniable. They remember them before Jesus, and they remember them after, and they were not the same. Jesus had an impact on their lives that was undeniable. Because there was a time, as Jesus says in the gospel today, a good tree cannot bear rotten fruit. And so there may be a time when the apostles' lives, but there was a lot of rotten fruit. There may be a time in your life where you could say the same. Before God, before Jesus, before your conversion, before you got it, like I've been going to church all my life, and but at some point it clicked, and I realized he is alive. He is with me. He loves me despite everything. He will never leave me nor forsake me. He is the light that can overcome my darkness. He is joy in my sorrows. He is strength in my weakness. He is peace in time of worry or anxiety. The day we met him and nothing else would be the same. When we realize that Jesus is real, that God's love is real, and that it is accessible to us. And that's when our lives begin to bear good fruit. So let us never settle for just the words. May I never settle for, for just the words preaching. May you never settle for just hearing them and doing nothing. Because remember, when Jesus, the parable of the, the house built on sand and the house built on rock, it says that the one built on sand, on, on, on that there was winds and waves that buffeted the house. And when the storm was over, the house collapsed. And then there was a house built on rock. And what did the two houses have in common? The one built on sand and built on rock? The same adversity. The one on rock that had winds and waves that buffeted the house just like the other house. But in the end, when the storm was over, the second house was still standing. And for us to be still standing, we cannot avoid the storms of life. It's not possible in this world. But rather than trying to avoid them, let us build, a, build, build our lives on the solid foundation of the love of Christ that endures forever. That's when our lives, even in a topsy-turvy, stormy world, even still our lives can bear the good fruit of an enduring love, of faithfulness, of kindness, of charity, of self-sacrifice and of peace. May truly as we, uh, as we today entrust ourselves to our Heavenly Father, again, let us allow the word, his word of truth make us free and his word of love conquer our fears. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in relationship with us. Lord God, we thank you that you don't just stop with talk. You don't just say you love us. No, you sent your son who died for us. Lord God, may we also never settle just with the words spoken or taught or read. May we allow your word to become flesh in our lives so that people may begin to believe the extraordinary claim that Jesus who died is still present in our midst. May they believe it because of the impact we have allowed Jesus to make on our lives. The claim is incredible. But Lord, may your impact on our lives be undeniable as people want to have what we have, the peace that we have, the love that we know, and we're more than happy to share it with them through Christ our Lord. Amen.